Today, I'm going to be reviewing this camera, the Leica MP, which I've had for about two and a half years now, and previously owned, I think, three other Leicas before it. So the Leica MP is one of two modern production Leicas, along with the MA, which lacks the meter. Is it a nice camera? Well, I've owned other Leicas and liked them before I bought this, so obviously I'm going to like it, but is it worth the price that they command? Um, well, rationally, probably not, but if you like Leicas, maybe, and I'll get into why you might or might not find it worth it. And before I get into things, I have added timestamps below, so if you want to know more about, for instance, comparisons to other Leicas, comparisons to point-and-shoots, sharpness comparisons, etc., you can skip around as you desire. Briefly, I'm going to show some footage using it in the field with some of my favorite films, so Portra 160, and also FP4 and TMAX 100. I'll show some sharpness examples from TMAX 100 to see how sharp this camera is capable of being. And like I said, I'm going to compare it to a whole bunch of other cameras, unfortunately no SLRs, because I am in the cult of rangefinders. So let's talk about Leicas broadly and why you might or might not want to own a Leica again. Really wouldn't recommend buying this as your first Leica. Uh, buy something cheaper and decide if you like it, and if you do, then consider getting one of these. So the first reason to buy a Leica is because they're fun to shoot. They're very mechanical, everything in here is mechanical, also means they're pretty easily repaired. I think they're really pretty. Um, Part of the reason that people shoot film cameras is because they're so satisfying and because they're pretty, and I think that it's silly to deny that. Film loading in these is not bad. Some people will exaggerate how hard it is. Basically, you just look at this, uh, these two red dots, and they'll show you if it's advancing. Again, there are parallels for that in any other Leica where you can make sure your film is loaded properly. The light seals in here are super solid. It doesn't rely on foam as much as some other cameras, so they're less likely to go out. Since it does not have a mirror, there is no mirror slap, so people can get away with long shutters, meaning they're great in less light. There are a ton of lens options for Leicas, vintage Leica, there are modern Zeiss, modern Voigtlander, uh, modern Leica of course, though those are expensive. You can also easily adapt screw mount lenses, and that gives you a ton of options in terms of vintage lenses that are really cheap. They're rangefinders, so you see a frame line and Put that on the world. Personally, I'm a big fan, and that's the biggest reason why I like shooting rangefinders, but your mileage may vary. Thank you. 
there are also some minuses of Leicas in general. So these, the viewfinder in here has parallax correction, but it's not perfect. So framing won't be as correct as with an SLR. It's debatable, but the technology in Leicas in some sense is not as sophisticated as SLRs. So obviously there's no autofocus, for example. The meter in it is pretty primitive. It's just a center weighted average. Like it basically trusts you to know how to use a meter and doesn't try to do any fancy computer wizardry to figure out how to expose the frame for you. The MP is built with a brass construction like the classic early Leicas, the M2, M3, M4, and I believe M5. And in this particular Leica, the meter is also through the lens, so it should compensate for filters for you. The meter on this one is aero-based, like on an M6. So if you're within a stop or so, it'll be really easy to adjust. If you're farther off, it'll be hard to know how far off you are. Again, Leicas don't hold your hand, everything is manual, and I think the designers would say, you know, you probably have the exposure adjusted within a half a stop or a stop, the meter is just there to help you fine tune your exposure. Briefly, let's compare this guy to nearly every other Leica. So first up, the original is the M3. I have shot an M3, but I have never owned one. Really enjoyed using it. Tactile. Very satisfying to shoot. Big issue with the M3 is it will not go wider than a 50mm lens without a goggles on the front of it. The M3 has kind of weird film loading. Again, as with all Leicas, it's not as bad as people say it is, and you'll get used to it. The M3, very importantly, like the M2 and M4, does not have a meter, so you either need a hot shoe meter, you can use your phone, uh, or you can of course have a Seconic meter. I've owned both iPhones and Androids, and I find that the iPhone apps tend to be pretty reliable, the Android apps a little plus or minus, uh, just because they have to design for a bunch of different hardware. Next up is the M2. M2 adds 35mm lens capability, which is awesome because I really like that focal length. Otherwise, it feels almost identical to an M3. In my experience, your mileage may vary. Next up, the M4. I actually, in some sense, still have one because I gave mine to my wife. A wonderful camera. Most satisfying to operate 35mm camera I've ever shot. The M4 also has some added creature comforts, like the rewind knob is easier to use and a bit faster, and I believe the take-up spool might be a little bit better. Next up, chronologically are the M42 and M4P. Have not used them and can't comment. I will note that they are not brass based and some like slightly elitist Leica people don't like that. Next up the M5. Beautiful camera in my opinion. Some people think it's really ugly. It's a bit bigger and I think less ergonomic as a result. It's the earliest Leica that you can find in black without much of a premium. It has a wonderful meter that is a needle. So the needle's pointing up more. You're more over, I think, and if it's up less, you're just a little bit over, so it's easier to dial in, a, in exposure. The meter itself is a mechanical part that needs to extend and retract every frame, so it's a little bit fragile, and mine actually broke and needed to be serviced. I think the M5 is a really underrated camera. I'm not sure where prices are, but it used to be that you could get one for significantly less than an M6, and honestly, I would 
shoot an M5 over an M6 every day of the week. The M6 seems to be a really popular camera with sort of the YouTube type because it is the cheapest Leica that has a meter that's not an M5. I had an M6 briefly and sold it. I didn't find it quite as satisfying to use as earlier Leicas, and I rather have to use a hot shoe meter with an earlier Leica. I haven't shot the M7 or MA. The M7 is another odd duck, and I think if you want an M7, you know it. Briefly, I'll compare it to a couple point and shoots that I own or have owned. So first up, the Contax T3. You might find this a weird comparison, but I think a lot of people debate like, well, do I even need a Leica? Can't I just get a point and shoot? And you totally can. The T3 is regarded as one of the sharpest point and shoots of all time. It has a 35mm Carl Zeiss sonar 2.8 lens. That's a mouthful. I do find that Zeiss's 35 2.8 for Leica is noticeably sharper. The Secondly, the Leica viewfinder is way better. Glorious viewfinder. Leica's manual focus, which means that if you know what you're doing, and really just that means shooting a couple rolls, you will nail focus basically every time. Leicas are serviceable, unlike most point and shoots, so I expect to keep using my Leica for decades. That's why I was willing to pay quite a bit for it. There are, of course, some advantages for the point and shoots. So the T3 has a built in flash, which the Leica doesn't, and you can use that painlessly. I love shooting flash on point and shoots. It's the reason why I own them, because you get that super fun snapshotty look. And needless to say, point and shoots are a lot smaller and lighter. If that is what you want, absolutely get a point and shoot. So next up, the Roll i35. I want to highlight this one because the mechanical interface of it and also the viewfinder are really great and I think scratch a lot of the same itches that a Leica does at a way cheaper price point and also it's a small and beautiful camera. It's also fully mechanical, which means perhaps it'll be able to be serviced for a while, at least likely longer than electronic point and shoots. Notably, it is a guest focused camera, so you have to be comfortable with that. Finally, let's talk lenses. I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of the Zeiss lenses. Wonderful optics, great coatings, pretty modern rendering for what that's worth. And they're not cheap, but they're not wildly expensive. Shout out vintage screw mount lenses. I have a Canon 50 1.4 from the 50s. Voigtlander makes a wide variety of lenses, both classic and modern renderings. Just make sure you read the reviews. Vintage Leica is often a pretty good deal and will be always satisfying to use and will keep the aesthetic of the camera coherent. Modern Leica, of course, great, but expensive. So in conclusion, should you buy an MP? Well, do you own a Leica now? If not, buy another Leica first. If you own a Leica now and you see yourself shooting it for the next 10 or 20 years, why not buy an MP? Of course, it's expensive, only do it if you feel like it, but uh, if you're going to own the camera for decades, I don't see anything wrong with getting a nice one. So that is it for today. Hope you found the video interesting and useful. I do respond to comments, so feel free to leave one if you're curious about anything or if you'd like to correct anything I've said. I'm not a historian. And I post something like a video a month, so subscribe if you want. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you also have a great day. I will talk to you later.